Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Zoo is back. Look at this. This is a Dota 2 Pro Tracker, which has stats from all the highest level pub games. And here in the highest minute heroes, we see Lycan, number one, followed by Visage, Enigma. So Beastmaster, also very high up here. A lot of these two heroes doing really well. Chen, also fairly high win rate here. And it's true that for Visage and Enigma, pick rates are quite low, but for Lycan, Beastmaster, and Chen, they have very decent pick rates. So these heroes are quite strong now. And today we're going to look at one of these heroes, and that is Lycan. In particular, we're going to look at him in the offlane role. And first we'll talk about skill build and item builds, and then we'll jump into a game where Quaiko is playing offlane Lycan. So this is a skill build you almost always want to follow on Lycan. We max out our Wolves because they provide us so much damage and scale really, really well. The only exception is that uh, if you're at level 3 and we're struggling with the region, we might consider putting a second point Infernal Impulse here and then getting the second level of Wolves at level 4. But most of the time this is the best. Howl is a very efficient spell at level 1, but at the start we're really short of mana so we can't really take it at level 4 most of the time. Unless we have something like a Cotton in our lane. But most of the time you want to have this at level 8 because it's just a very strong value point. It's 25% damage reduction and 5 uh, armor reduction. So we want this over an extra level of Feral Impulse at this stage, but not earlier usually. And then we max out Feral Impulse second because it scales really well, it scales linearly. Whereas how most of the value is in the first point and the other points are a lot less valuable. So that's why we max it out last. Of course, we take shape whenever we can, and we also want to take our talents whenever we can because they're quite powerful. The exception here is perhaps at level 10, we might put an extra point in the Feral Impulse uh, over the level 10 talent and then get the 10 talent at 11. That's also possible. It's a bit of a wash whether you want uh, damage on wolves or damage on everything. But uh, generally, you want to go for these talents, summon wolves damage, much better than the Feral HP region. You can have plenty of region, especially since we, we, we're going to be going for Dominator and Hill of the Overlord. Then summon wolves health or shapeshift cooldown. That's a bit of a toss up. They're both uh, quite strong talents. It's very situational. I think most of the time this is a bit better, but uh, this is also very strong, obviously. Uh, impulse damage generally is better than the shapeshift duration. Shapeshift already lasts a decent period of time. You would much rather have this consistent damage output from Feral Impulse. And of course also helps out greatly with our dominated creeps. And level 25 is another toss-up. Both these talents are excellent. So if you're in a game where your wolves tend to survive fairly well or if you are relying heavily on split pushing, you want to get this uh, plus two wolves because even in late game it's actually a lot of damage output. Whereas if you're in a game where your wolves are not really doing that much anymore, then you want to uh, probably take this. This also gets extra value if you're getting an Agonim, so you get this uh, wolf bite ability. But uh, I would say like in maybe like 60% of games you want to go for this. Not for the items. The starting items are not set in stone at all. There's a lot of different possibilities you can go for. Here, this is what I'm suggesting, is we're going Tango, a Quelling Blade, Sage's Mask, and three Mangoes. And regardless of what starting items you go for, the goal is always to rush to Helm of Dominator. You might even possibly start with an empty inventory. This is going to help you get Dominator even faster, but of course going to make your laning weaker. And it sort of relies on having an ally in lane who can uh, share some region with you. So if you're playing with random people in a pub, that might not work too well. But with these items, you can have a strong laning phase, some region here, and these mangoes are partly just for the HP region that they give. Mango is actually the most efficient region item in the game. It's actually more efficient than a ring of health or a ring of region, a gold. And then we have Sage's Mask helping out with our mana, which then later is going to be turned into the Vlads for Helm of the Overlord. If you expect to find yourself in the very spammy lane, you can get a stick instead of these mangoes. So for example, if you expect to be laning against something like a Bristleback or a Zeus, then a stick is great. And generally speaking, you don't want to go for stick in the early game unless it's like a lane where a stick really has a lot of value because 
it's so important to get this Dominator ASAP. Dominator has a fairly good build up. We have the Helm of Iron Will, which gives us 6 armor and 5 HP region, a very strong laning item. Not as strong on Lycan as it is on many other offlaners because he already has innately high region from his aura. But it's still nice to have. And then we have the crown, four attributes. It's not bad, but nothing to write home about. So depending on how that is going, you want to go either for Anvil or Crown first. But in either order you go for these, you want to rush for this very, very fast. You don't want to buy items on the way. You don't want things like Boots of Speed or Windlace. Because those delay you too much. And Movement Speed is not that important on Lycan anyway because... We get fixed movement speed with our ultimate. The reason we go for Dominator is that we just get a lot of value out of that extra creep with our aura. We give the creep extra damage. And also note that the Helm of Dominator gives uh, base damage to the creep. So this gets amplified fully by our aura. So that's awesome. And just the creeps with the extra movement speed and crit from the ultimate are going to be able to wreak quite a lot of havoc. It's of course not quite as good as the old necro book but you know it's the best we can do in this patch and then we just followed it up immediately with helm of the overlord so this change to overlord really makes the item much stronger on lycan the old helm of overlord was really not that good on lycan forcing us in the old patch to go for some sort of right click build with like an echo saber and armlet things like that which is still something you can actually do. It's, it's still, I think, viable build. But in general, I think the Helm of Overlord has proven itself to be a little bit stronger in this patch. Especially, especially if you're playing offlane. If you're playing carry, you can maybe still go for the right click build. But offlane, definitely, this is the build to go for. Then we get this uh, Vlad, which is like not a great item on Lycan, but it's a decent item on Lycan, especially on offlane Lycan. Uh, so that's just a much, much better build up than the old one with uh, this utterly useless ultimate orb which Lycan really has no use for. If we can get a good timing in our Hoto, anything before 15 minutes should be fine. Then we have such a powerful timing. We're going to be the strongest hero on the map most likely and so we want to extend that power spec that we have. So at this point we can just go for something like a drum. Very powerful item, was also buffed recently and the movement speed component is not as important for Lycan but the attack speed from the active is really powerful and outside of the ultimate this is uh, quite useful with the extra movement speed and strength and int uh, is stuff that, that Lycan really likes and drum is just a deadly timing item so you can really drive that early mid game power spike home shard was buffed a lot recently so we pretty much always want to go for the shard it gives us a lot of split pushing power and it's going to give us some gold over the long run. We always go for the shard. The question is just when. If you're having like a really good game, you're really pushing and you're overrunning the enemy team, you probably want to delay this because it's not an item that really helps you like win team fights. It's more like a split pushing kind of uh, item. So in those kinds of games, you want to skip this until a little bit later. But in a game that's more even or where you're even behind, you want to get an early shard. It's here, of course, is a natural follow-up on Lycan. It just makes everything we do better. It gives us attack speed, which is great. Armor reduction and armor for our units. What's not to like? It's also a great teamfight item. So as a plus three, you want to typically buy items that uh, also enable your other cores to shine. And that's exactly what we're doing here with this flat component from Heaven Overlord with a drum aura and the active with this AC aura. So Lycan, of course, a bit of an unorthodox offlaner. He doesn't really initiate. He doesn't have any stuns. So we need to contribute to team fights in other ways. And we can do this by buying these aura items, which of course already synergize with Lycan really well. At some point, of course, you need to buy a BKB. You might have to buy this earlier than AC. You might, uh, might be able to buy this after AC. In some games, you can even get another item after AC before the BKB. But at some point, you definitely want a BKB. As far as boots go, they're rather situational. Boots help you. They help you farm. 
and you know treads is a fairly efficient like right click item helps with mana problems because you can tread switch but i think on offline lichen more often than not you actually want to skip boots entirely and just uh, go for your other items get this other item timings earlier Aghanim Scepter, very powerful situationally if you have a carry hero that benefits a lot from this. So what it gives you is this Wolf Bite ability. So with this you can basically give uh, like an ult to one of your teammates. And this is very powerful if any sort of melee carry uh, heroes, you know, like a Sven, like a, a Bloodseeker. Like uh, Phantom Lizard, for example, would not be that strong because it doesn't affect uh, the other illusions. Also, like a ranged hero, like Draw Ranger, is not that great. Uh, but if it's like more of a short range hero that's uh, a bit sturdier, something like a Luna or a Gyrocopter, it's still going to work out really well. Or if you have a hero like a Monkey King or Ursa, these heroes benefit tremendously from you getting an Aghanims. Nullifier is a great item, either sort of a late game luxury kind of item or even earlier in some games because Lycan struggles against uh, people who buy Ghost Scepter and he also struggles against uh, Crimson Guard but both of these items you can dispel with Nullifier you can also dispel various of these defensive items that supports like to buy things like Glimmer Cape, Force Starve uh, Yules even can even dispel Eon Disc. So this is a very powerful item on Lycan, mostly for the active. The so Locust is not an item you would typically see in a carry Lycan, but on an offline Lycan, it's uh, quite strong, if, especially if you have some sort of carry that benefits a lot from having Solar Crest put on them. Since you're the offlaner, you might have to buy some of these like general aura or utility items. Things like Pipe or Crimson Guard. They're not the really items you want to buy as Lycan, but in some games you have to. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Lotus Orb, kind of a similar story. It's a nice supportish offlaner kind of item. If your team needs to you need someone to buy a Lotus Orb, you might as well buy it. And in some games, you just need an Eon Disc not to get busted. Uh, usually, there's not an item you want to buy in Lycan, but in some games, you kind of have to. Okay, let's jump into the game now. This is a Lycan game played by Quaikwa, playing offline Lycan. And he's gone for a bit of an unusual start. I don't really recommend this. I have no region at all. Of course, it means he's already going to be on the way towards his Helm of Dominator. Um, and he's then he's going to fly himself out some region with the Rune Gold. So I would not recommend this generate this build, but of course it can work out. And yeah, yes, 260 gold or something. Of course, usually we don't have quite as much gold if we didn't get that uh, kill. But now he's flying without um, one mango and uh, one tango. Being a bit stingy there. And now in the lane, it's just about last hitting as much as possible, getting nice where you can. There's no real way of being aggressive with Lycan. You might be able to outtrade opponents because you have good region with Fell Impulse, but the kill potential for Lycan is pretty much nil before you get uh, Shapeshift. The Equal has some connection problems and actually disconnected for a couple of minutes, but it was mostly passed, so didn't uh, really lose anything in the lane, at least not much. And as you can see, he's still he's doing. All right, in the lane you see ahead and then last hit and denies compared to Dusa. And Lycan is just a really good last hitter with the wolves together. No reason to keep your wolves alive. You have a huge amount of uh, just last hit damage. You have Lycan is pretty good, uh, good base damage and the wolves add a lot. It is important to line up your hits from the from your uh, hero and and the wolves. You wanna have everything near the creep so you don't want to just sort of run around and randomly last hit. Um, what you usually see is whenever a creep is about to die, he's going to position both his heroes and the wolves near the creep so that he can properly align his hits. See what he did here? So we get now again, always sort of lining up 
uh, in front of the creep so that you don't get this random uh, factor of the turn animation. There's really not too much you can do uh, as like in, in the linear stage it's all just about last sitting and denying. If your support gets gone on like this, there's not much you can do to save. You can just hit people, hope to outrade them. So he's actually fallen a bit behind in the Medusa. The name of the game is just uh, be patient and uh, wait for your dominator and the ultimate. That's your first big power spike. Your Praetorian Protector is a bit too over eager and gets killed. Actually, rotation here coming in from PA, who's uh, been struggling a lot in a lane against uh, Viper. It was not really a matchup that the PA is going to feel comfortable with. So it makes sense for her to rotate here. And like in the stage, uh, is able to do some jungling. You don't really want to go up against the Viper either. And uh, if you TP up there, they can just, just switch. So he's just going to stay down here a bit and just uh, finish um, farming his ultimate in the jungle. He wants to look for jungle groups anyway because the Dominator. So he's got a very nice creep. The two groups you want to look for at the start are the Hellbird Smasher and uh, the Big Centaur. These are very powerful creeps. Of course, it's quite easy to land these uh, storms and such with the ultimate. Outside the ultimate, it's a bit harder, but uh, yeah, these are the two prime creeps you want uh, to have. The Alpha Wolf is decent as well uh, because of the aura it gives, but it kind of overlaps a little bit with uh, Lycan's innate aura. I already have a good amount of damage boost there. So you'd rather have uh, the attack speed bonus here from the Hellbird Smasher. Combined with this Thunderclap ability. The other big creeps are not that great. Bobbling Ripper, I mean, it's an armor aura, it's not bad, and it does a decent amount of right click damage by itself. So it's not terrible, but it's not really a creep you're excited by. This one, the Hadouken Creep, is uh, decent as well. The Shockwave damage is actually quite relevant at this stage of the game. That's decent, good to take. In a similar vein, you can also take the Harpy, which is a pretty good farming creep. Uh, with all the uh, mana region that uh, Dominator provides. She's actually doing quite well as Dominator creep. Uh, but she does piercing damage, which means she's good at farming, but uh, not uh, very good at killing heroes. Also an important aspect of this uh, creep is that it has full night vision, which on Lycan is a little bit less relevant than in most heroes, because with the ultimate you already get increased night vision. But outside the ultimate, it's uh, very useful to have this extra night vision, because regular heroes only have 800 night vision, but uh, this little creep has 1800. Now that we have our dominator and the ultimate, we have hit our first big power spike. None of these flying moves without some extra region. Flames of like really clarity, also actually a mango that he ate right away. And I was trying to go for a kill, but uh, everything's already dead, so he's just gonna go for the tower instead. And that's pretty much always the MO on Lycan, is you farm when you don't have ultimate, then when you have ultimate, you look for a fight. If you win the fight, you go and try to take an objective. If you can, you try to take the tower. It didn't quite get it, but at least got it fairly low. With not that many heroes uh, protecting the tower, they can keep forcing this with the C cube as well. Of course, without shape, you have to be super careful. This is why it's usually treating right now. But um, it actually gets the last hit here with the wolves, which uh, is... A little bit lucky, I mean, definitely they could have denied that. On the way towards Overlord, it's uh, definitely viable to throw in some uh, smaller items, like you maybe get like a stick, or you might uh, get uh, like uh, infused raindrops, help with the mana problems. But uh, you don't actually have to, because you already get like a fairly good build-up from Blads. You have these small items, Ring of Basilius, Buckler, that are fairly efficient. So... It's not really necessary, you can just straight rush this Helm of Overlord. Although I do actually recommend uh, getting a stick, that's uh, just a really efficient item. Sometimes an opportunity falls into your lap, so he sees these couriers at the secret shop. So he's just going to dispatch the wolves, look for the courier, and yoink. You know that he's taking the dangerous farm right now. This allows the PA to take the more safe farm down at bottom. He has ultimate, so can usually get away here if he gets cards. Um, Bane is not so lucky, however. While you do generally want to look for a fight when you have shape trip up, it's also really important to get a good overload timing. 
can see he's going to get this around 14 minutes, which is an excellent timing. Anything under 15 minutes is quite good. Anything under like 17 minutes is also still uh, still pretty good. Um, but if you, the, the later the item arrives, the weaker it's going to be. Because if you have 13 minutes and you attack someone with like a, a black dragon that does 200 damage, that is really powerful. And he just takes the uh, Center Conqueror because a uh, fight is brewing here. And also, by the way, note that when you get home from Overlord, your regular creep dies. This, I think, is a bug, but that's how it works right now. So, I just want to go after the range uh, um, heroes most, uh, most of all, because they just take more damage from your controlled units, but they don't have a damage block. Um, yeah, you just want to typically go after like uh, either range cores that don't have much mobility or like, supports. They can kill easily, and uh, you saw him actually move out of uh, the Viper range with his hero, but continuing with his units, also an uh, important thing to master. You don't always have to hit with the hero, because you're, at least at this stage of the game, most of the damage is from the Wolves and from the Dominant Creep. They're going to be an easy kill on this uh, Ember Spirit, and now it's taken with the Agent Tanide. This is, in many cases, the, the best... Uh, Creep to take. This uh, Thunderhide has a very powerful slam ability. That's uh, quite a lot of damage. 250 magic damage every 6 seconds in a pretty large radius. And it also has this Frenzy ability, which is a buff. You can cast it in any friendly unit. And usually you just want to cast this on your carry if you can, or just cast it on yourself, or even the Ancient Creep itself. And it gives 75 attack speed with 8 duration and 8 uh, cooldowns. So you can just keep spamming this because of how much uh, mana region the Thunderhide has. You rarely actually run out of mana. You also actually get extra mana region from the Vlad's aura. So this is fine. So this is uh, one of the two groups that are very powerful. In a pinch, you can also take uh, over uh, this Ancient Rumblehide, which has a pretty decent aura. It's 25% attack speed bonus and 40 accuracy, so it's decent against evasion, but uh, this is pretty much always better. But if you say find one of these camps where the uh, Thunderhide is gone, you only find the, the smaller ones, you might consider taking this if you don't have a creep already. The other big important creep that's, um, I would say, roughly equal in strength to the Thunderhide is the Ancient Black Dragon. And this has three abilities as a fireball, which uh, you can basically think of it as uh, the Dragon Knight Shard, or you can think of it as like a, a level 1 Macropire, but in, in a circle. Then it has a splash attack, which is uh, very nice with all the bonus damage we're going to give this uh, dragon if you're taking it over. And then also has an aura, 3 armor aura, also stacks with itself, so if you have like another person with it also has a, a black dragon from Home Overlord, or if you say playing with a Chen who is uh, who has uh, the uh, the shard and is taking over a black dragon, don't worry, this aura actually stacks. But yeah, this fight is uh, it's a bit awkward. This kind of um, a curse there, and the problem, the reason this Viper is not dying so fast is because he had uh, Crimson Guard, which basically means that uh, your uh, summons deal almost no damage. And yeah, so this fight, it's still 2 for 1, but uh, it is not the kind of stomp you might be expecting. In the past, of course, you could have just uh, dispelled the Crimson Guard with your Necro Archer, but that's no longer possible, obviously. So you can, of course, uh, take one of these uh, little perch creeps, if I can find one, uh, which it appears like I can't. But yeah, the little set satyr. These are not that strong, however. It's like Helm of Overlord just to take over a perch creep is just not, uh, not worth it. You just rather deal with the, uh, the damage block and uh, get a better creep instead. The only realistic option to deal with that at this stage of the game is to get Nullifier, but here just getting the AC is more important. Nullifier, it's 
it's really only good for the active. The damage and the armor and so on is not that great in Lycan, actually, because you're not, a, not attacking that fast. The AC, of course, is a good item in Lycan, but I would prefer him to go for a drum first. And he is actually going to get drum eventually in this game, but he's going to go for the AC first, which is a bit of a more greedy option. Let's go see the Dusa that helping out, otherwise you could have stomped her. Uh, so, sometimes you just find yourself awkwardly running into the fight, and the fight is already over when you arrive. Um, it happens. Nothing to be done about it. Uh, so they're just going to use this uh, one fight and this ultimate to get take over Roshan. And like, of course, a very fast Roshan take, which do so much physical damage here. And even this lowly center conqueror is uh, doing well over 200 damage per hit. But of course, it's even better if you get a, uh, an ancient creep. This uh, is probably the worst ancient creep, at least the, the worst of the uh, big ones. It has a pretty good uh, damage output, has pretty good HP, and has this uh, um, HP aura, which gives 15% extra HP to everything in the radius. And that's fine, but it just pales in comparison to the other uh, two big ancient creeps. So this is the game, if you can't get an ancient creep, the best creeps to go for are generally going to be the alpha wolf. Extra damage is always nice. It just died here. 30% extra damage aura. It can also be nice to get like uh, the Helba Smasher and the Centaur still quite strong. Uh, the Helba Smasher later on, especially the Swiftness aura is, is interesting to have. Uh, this is still nice, but of course it falls off later on in the game. These creeps offer you a Cloak aura, which is not that great. I mean, it's better than nothing, but uh, just getting this 60 gold item for like a 10% magic resistance aura is not the best. We talked about these situationally, these are decent, but uh, there's usually better creeps to, to take over. Now, anyway, what we just do is you run at people when you see them, a bit of force fights whenever you have ultimates. In this case, they find this uh, Viper, and thanks to the Blink on Lion, gets off uh, that uh, stun and the kill. And yeah, now we just uh, see if we can take an objective. Always a checklist. Fight with the ultimate, take an objective if possible, and then go back to farming. So they've killed two pe people here, and now it's time for the tower. He's gone here for the summon wolf damage talent, the very standard and the shapeshift cooldown talent, which is fine. I mean, as I said, uh, both these little 15 talents are about equally strong. And yeah, now it's going for the for the drum after the AC. I would prefer a different order, but uh, it's fine as well. And here in this game, I think it's correct not to go for the Agnum shards. Uh, currently, they're sort of overrunning the opponent, so you want to buy buy items that actually help your team win fires. It help you take take objectives, and uh, not items that are designed more for split pushing. In this situation, Lion is jumping forward to do some harassment uh, a bit foolishly, and here I think. He's making a mistake. I think he should, he should be attacking those serpent wards because he can kill us really fast. They only take two hits to kill and they take the same amount of hits from uh, heroes and, and creeps. So with creeps, he can take this out really fast and maybe save this lion's life. How to say though. I mean, this is never going to resolve in anything. Without ultimate, there's no chance at all that he can get any sort of kill here. Instead, he's going to clean up the wards afterwards as a bit of a consolation prize. Uh, barely gets off that uh, uh, boots of travel there. <laughs> Wolf almost expired. I forgot to say this earlier, but after finishing the overload, you can also add in some smaller items before you get like drum or AC. You can, of course, get the stick if you don't have it already. Very efficient, or even the complete wand. You can get something like a blightstone. In this case, they already have a desolator on uh, PA, so blightstone doesn't stack with that. But. Um, Maybe you could actually argue for an Orb of Corrosion here. That's also actually a decent item on Lycan. Uh, the slow is nice, helps you up, uh, catch up with people easier, and the armor reduction of course is great. But, you know, I'm fine with him skipping that and just going for the drum. Uh, the only thing I would like to see is a stick. So yeah, they're pretty much uh, stomping in this game, and at this at this point, uh, the game is much over. With Lycan, you can often end games quite fast. This was a 26 minute game, and it was not a stomp at the start. In fact, if you look at the graphs, 
the Indian team is actually ahead in the early game, the laning stage and even the early mid game. They're actually slightly ahead. You can see at the end of the laning stage, Viper and Dusa top of net worth. And mid lane went, went fairly, fairly close. But at, uh, at top, the Viper just uh, won the lane very handily against uh, the PA. And yeah, Lycan compared to Dusa is fairly even. But yeah, the, the PA is really struggling here. But it doesn't really matter. PA didn't actually have to do very much in this game. He just sort of showed up and uh, threw out some of her daggers and so on. But um, really, it was like Lycan and the Winter Vyvern, the Mid Winter Vyvern, who sort of carried the game. And then also, they had these aggressive supports that allowed them to really capitalize on uh, the strong mid and offlaner. However, a word of warning Lycan is not quite as good in lower level games as he is here in these high immortal games. So if you take a look at um, the stats here, in Divine and Immortal, he has 57.4% win rate at a fairly high pick rate as well. And a high ban rate. So this hero is incredibly powerful when people know what they're doing and when people know how to actually push objectives. However, in the lower leagues, people are just not as good at taking objectives. So... If you look at here, Crusader, it's still good win rate, but not as high. Guardian, we are at 50%. Herald, we're actually below 50%. So yeah, this hero is very strong, but he gets stronger the higher you move up in MMR. So that's how you play Lycan. And I'm definitely going to be making also videos on all sorts of other superheroes that were buffed. Uh, I'm going to make a video on uh, Beastmaster, who's also really powerful. Perhaps even stronger than Lycan. I'm gonna cover Chen, who got some nice bars. We'll talk about Lone Druid. We'll talk about uh, Visage, Enigma. So if you don't want to miss that, definitely subscribe to this channel and also follow me on uh, Twitch. Uh, link is down below. And Oblisvilling, I'll see you next time.